It seems like all the information we've been waiting for about NBA 2K22 when it came to the my player, to the my career, the city, the cruise ship, what the pro-am was gonna look like, matchmaking, the side quests as rappers, fashion moguls, 2K's new venture into RPG, they detailed all of it in a series of different blog posts, tweets, videos, so I got it all here for y'all in one video. If y'all enjoyed and y'all wanna see more, drop a like on it. <laughs> Y'all new to the channel, bro, and you haven't already, why haven't you subscribed? It takes like half a second. But hey, man, let's get into it. Hey, so first of all, there was two blog posts that dropped. One was from Operation Sports, and the second was actually from 2K themselves. They were the last ones to drop the blog post for some reason. 2K is always the last to their own thing. So let's start off by talking about next gen. 2K is going away from a more traditional story. They said they want to try, and this is an attempt, bro, because it could be horrible, a new RPG-like 2K experience, where there's a whole bunch of NPCs having random conversations. Imagine it like Assassin's Creed. You can walk up to people, get quests and side quests that can help give you XP so that you can continue to earn some rank and reputation within in the city. 2K is claiming here that the NPCs fully bring the world around you together. Something they didn't do last year, so I'm curious to see if they could pull it off this year. Brother Davis, what do you think about the news, man? Wait, wait, no, no, no. What I just said to you is 10 times more important. I know, it was in the courtside report. I can't wait to be on vacation with you, man. Uh, hey, man, me too. Davis, you're making me get ahead of myself though, my brother. I'm gonna call you back, okay? <laughs> Some of the stuff in the courtside report aren't in this Operation Sports article and vice versa, so each have like their own unique bit of information because over here, it says, and I quote, you have an ability to upgrade your crib on next gen, such as a penthouse with a zip line to take you directly to specific courts as a player's home plays a part in their my career as a location where their coaches and friends will give players new quests. So for some reason, they refuse to call it a my court on next gen. They're calling it your crib. So on the cruise ship, it's called my court. On next gen, it's called your crib. 2K also has a new matchmaking building and Club 2K where players can access music from the hottest labels with drops from every new season. Okay, so all of that is like, okay, cool. We've gotten to it. So let's start with this trailer and I'm not actually gonna watch it with y'all because Power did us the favor of breaking down all the important stuff. If you guys want to watch it, you can. It's really just a bunch of different cutscenes. I'd argue it's pretty pointless. Here are the important parts. Here is the first look of the city map. It looks truncated and smaller. It's still a big city, but it was a bunch of empty random buildings. So although you're probably gonna see empty random buildings in NBA 2K22 as well, there's gonna be less of them. And you could just see, this is just a smaller city in general, something that the community asked for because it was inconvenient to have to walk or fly or drive five minutes to get to the other side of the city. Screenshot here of some quests, race of the week in week four, Adidas daily, daily challenge, the new balance daily challenge, help out thoroughly wash too. So it just gives you an idea of what you could expect out of some of these quests. Although we don't know what's involved here, we do know some sponsors are involved. So of course 2K found a way to make money off of the quests. Ain't nothing wrong with that as long as they're good quests. Power mentions the new rooftop Vipers Park got no got next spots, so I think this might be for matchmaking. Who knows, it might not be, but it might be the matchmaking building that 2K was talking about in the blog post. There's some problems with matchmaking, some glaring issues just based off the blog post, so we'll get to that in a moment. Here is Dirk, caster for the NBA 2K League, comparing the NBA 2K21 city with the NBA 2K22 city. So you can see as we skip back and forth here, one is just larger than the other so we'll see what this new city landscape looks like hopefully it's easier to get around and everything is easier to find and easier to remember and just more convenient overall quality of life stuff grinding here drops a screenshot of uh, one of the decks in the cruise ship we're gonna get to the cruise ship talk a little bit later here we have the first look at roller skates which is one of the ways you can get around in the city power is mentioning here in the trailer you can see the vote here banner so mayors are back in nba 2k22 next gen so if you enjoyed the mayor feature although I don't know many who did, you can enjoy it in NBA 2K22 as well. Okay, so let's get back to the courtside report because those were really the only important things they released for us in the trailer. 2K says here, my career is no longer like a movie and it is like an interactive adventure. And then they proceed to give us a little synopsis here of the character that you're gonna be rocking called MP. He's a high school phenom apparently and he moves to the city with his best friend who's a business manager. I don't know too many high school people whose best friends is adult business managers <laughs> that might just be someone trying to take advantage of him but instead of the more traditional story is going to be like you move to the city and you got to get your reputation up okay let's complete these daily challenges where you go to this place you do this thing you go to this place you do this thing they give us a couple of examples of what those challenges and quests might look like there's a lot of variety to what you can do too ranging from completing statistical milestones in the city and 
NBA Prime Games to earning endorsement cash for promoting local businesses in creative ways to taking selfies in front of city landmarks. Just a few examples. I kind of f with it, to be honest. I know as pointless as it is to take, but come on, y'all. They had to do something like it's a basketball game at the end of the day. This is not like GTA or Assassin's Creed. They're a little bit more limited on the type of quests they can help you with. I just hope they're engaging and they're fun to do. If it meets those two criteria for me, I will be addicted to them. If not, I wouldn't give a soul about them. 2K mentions it's less linear and much more an open experience allowing you to build draft stock through pickup games, college, G League, training sessions, interviews, and more. Which I don't imagine is too different from the way they've done it in previous 2K, so maybe that wasn't the best examples to give. They continue giving examples on how next-gen's RPG-like features are gonna be transformative. They say this. The sheer number of characters you interact with is one of the highlights of this year's My Career. You'll be visiting your PR director at the team facility, reporters in their offices, and reps of brands like Nike and Adidas at their company headquarters. Almost anything you do in my career can be done by interacting with face-to-face -face with colorful, colorful personalities. They also mentioned there's gonna be some kind of like really dope reward for music trivia within the game. I guess like 2K's really in with the labels now because they're talking about all this music that labels is gonna be dropping within the game. They're talking about, they keep bringing up this side quest side career as a rapper is the main focus, the main side career focus. And in the actual trailer, they even show what the booth would look like, which by the way is not nothing crazy new neither because in NBA 2K18, they also had a booth you can walk into and make beats in. I don't know if y'all remember that. There was a building in an alleyway in 2K18 where you can do that as well. 2K also says this year they're introducing this new thing called a personal brand. The personal brand system that mirrors the real world dynamic will keep track of everything you do on and off the court and assign a personal brand points to a variety of characteristics like free spirit, flashy, corporate, fundamental, and more. They also give a few examples of side quests here. They say ranging from races around the city, more on that below, to sit down interview opportunities that crop up when you do things like run up the score at the end of a blowout. And we've see things like this before like interviews after games has has never been like a new thing it's it's been in 2k for about a decade i guess this year they've made them into side quests and you can gain i guess points for doing them and develop your personal brand that way but then they introduce like the pinnacle i guess of what you can achieve in the city they call it the mvp of the city everything you do in the city and we mean everything earns you mvp points nba and city games interviews side quests and runaway walks yes runway walks, among other things, all bring you one step closer to being MVP of the city, the ultimate goal for any 2K baller. And the MVPs do, and I repeat, do unlock a penthouse apartment, quick access to affiliation courts, and more, fellas. So about time they bring the penthouses back. It's been like three, four years. They refuse to call it a my court, though. They're not calling it my court. And of course, like they did in the previous courtside report, they reintroduced the idea of season. So there's gonna be seasonal content. Once you reach level 40, which is maximum in the season, then you're done. And when the new season starts, you have to start back from zero. I know some people hear stuff like that and they freak out. Guys, it's very common in the gaming industry to do seasonal content that way. But everything you do earn in season one, you get to bring along with you in season two. They just reset the rankings. 2K also mentions that if you get to level 40 in I believe four seasons, they said it doesn't have to be four straight seasons. As long as you do it in four seasons, then you achieve legend status. They didn't give away what the legend reward was for NBA 2K22 Next Gen, but they they said it's gonna be something good, obviously. But for the past few 2Ks, I, I think we could all agree they were pretty underwhelming. So hopefully in this department, this year, 2K delivered. So 2K uh, will drop the, a photo of the city here. Willie, throw some B-roll on the screen, my brother, because they say that they really went in depth when it came to redesigning the city. They gave some examples here of everything from bricks to fire escapes to windows looking a lot more lived in. There's dirt, scuffs, and aging. So I guess they're, they're really saying the art team went crazy. If you ask me, I'd say there's way too much gray. And I get it, like the floor when you walk outside is gray, but for some reason it just looks depressing when I look at it here. So less gray, please, just make it any other color or do something with the lighting. 
I get for simplicity reasons and optimization reasons, 2K might be hesitant. You don't want to add random lag spikes because you tried to change the color of the floor. Or you don't want to, I get it. But also, come on, we don't want to repeat a 2K18, all right? More color, more color, less gray, please. They also say we've added interiors that you can seamlessly enter and exit without any load whatsoever, including a huge open air mall that makes browsing quicker and more enjoyable than ever. This is the, actually a very interesting point because one of the biggest criticisms with 2K21 next gen was the fact that most of the buildings is just there to be there. You can't enter them, you can't interact with them. They're just in the way of where you're actually trying to go. And while it looks cool the first time you scroll around the city, every other time you move around the city is just an annoyance and it serves no purpose. They do though, if you scroll down, drop us a video. I'm not gonna lie to you, this looks pretty cool ladies and gentlemen so this is what i guess the mall area would look like uh here we have the rec center there's like an area you can go up to here this might be the event area but if you look here it says this is where the lobby's at um this is the npc you can interact with for some kind of quest here this looks dope to me man this is cool this is cool i like how they forced color they just added color everywhere this is what i'm talking about when i say color Less great, please. Less great. The promenade shopping. So I guess this is some of the places you can interact with to get clothes, etc., etc. 2K also says they're committed to changing up like murals and the court floors every single season, as they did with 2K21 next gen. I imagine it's not going to be like foundational changes, like a building is going to disappear and it's going to be something else in this place, like Fortnite would have done. But it's it's just going to be small aesthetic differences that might just make it feel a little bit more fresh to you. And I don't think nobody's opposed to some small aesthetic changes. 2K also so there's like quests, there's side quests, and 2K is now saying there's also seasonal quests. They say this about it. Every season will introduce four seasonal stat quests, pushing city ballers to do things like score a ton of points, throw down vicious alley-oops, drop dimes, and more over the course of an entire season. I don't know why we capitalized season here. On top of that, every week there'll be a new race of the week. Speaking of, and they said they're gonna give you different routes, almost like Need for Speed, and if you win the race of the week, you get a million VC, my brothers. I imagine this is not gonna be without a lot of lag and cheating. There has to be a lot of lag and cheating. There has to be. Also, if the bike is the same speed, how could we like interact with people? Could we like punch people? That will make it so much more fun. I don't think I'm gonna do it, but. You can use one of your various vehicles like your skateboard, BMX bike, roller skates, et cetera, et cetera go-karts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I, I like the idea of giving out VC to incentivize people to participate in weekly events that serve to kind of just bring people together. Hopefully it's something that people actually do and commit to. Hopefully 2K really just incentivizes people to be a part of it more. Remember in the past, they had like dodgeball events and all type of stuff. 2K also a couple days ago dropped a list of different brands. You can take a look here, which one y'all gonna be rocking and spending all 100,000 of your VC on. Bleacher Reports is in the mix. The Marathon is back. They even have OVO clothing in the game this year. So for those of you who like to tune into the store every single day to see what's up, you could expect to see one of these brands in there at some point during the year. So then they get talking about matchmaking buildings, and this is the part where like they kind of killed it for me. They say one of the most requested features over the past years has been matchmaking, of course. I've been begging 2K to have a matchmaking feature in the park for a very, very long time. So 2K says in the 3v3 park, there's no squads allowed. So you might think, okay, maybe there's gonna be another matchmaking 3v3 where you can join with squads. No, there isn't. 2K mentions there's also a 3v3 players versus AI. I don't know who the f would participate in that. You'd have to really incentivize me to voluntarily play against AI with my friends. There's 3v3 versus other players, which is exciting, except it's cage matches. So it's trampoline basketball, which is cool too. But then 2K doesn't actually add a 3v3 player versus player. It's just cage matches, AI, and then no squads. <laughs> so it's like they add matchmaking, but they find a way to box out the reason why I wanted matchmaking. If you have a squad, you have no choice but to play in the city. So it's still great that people without squads can find games now. Still great. But also at least add in 3v3 player versus player with squads. Please, man. There's 1v1 player versus player. So I can imagine it's going to be a lot of post scorers playing this game mode right here. And then 2K did the thing we were begging them to do last year. Because if you remember last year, if you played in other affiliations, they gave you negative boost for that. So you would level up a fraction of the way as somebody who was playing on their affiliations courts. But they say they made a tweak to it this year because the new XP system gives you a 20% XP boost instead of a negative for playing games on your home court. So give people more instead of 
taking away. I like it. Also, let's let's not celebrate bare minimums here, ladies and gentlemen. This is something 2K should have got right last year. So them getting something wrong and then fixing it, I don't know how much round of applause you feel like you deserve for that, but I'm glad the change was made. 2K then says they're gonna be bringing back a bunch of events and there's gonna be some new events too. One they mentioned here is called the Chips Ahoy event because of course it has to have a sponsor. It's a weekend challenge where the winning baller takes home 1 million VC. They don't say too much about what the challenge is. All you know is there's a big VC incentive and there's brand giving them money so when I'm telling y'all there's plenty of ways for 2k to make money without making the game pay to win this is what I'm talking about like get, getting brands involved to pay for stuff and then giving away a million VC and then also have that's a win-win for everybody 2k makes money the players get a new park event that's hopefully enjoyable and then the winner gets VC everybody wins in this situation I'm telling y'all you don't need pay to win to have a very very lucrative game which is why it's frustrating when 2k goes in that direction but that's besides the point 2k also made some changes to the Gatorade private courts. Last year, they called them rental courts where you had to pay VC to play in these rented courts that they put way out of the way. The courts were also very glitchy. And honestly, I haven't used them after the first week of launch. So I couldn't tell you if the glitches ever improved. But what I can tell you is 2K made some adjustments because now they're no longer calling them rental courts because you don't have to rent them. They're free to use. So again, an error they made last year, they're finding a way to correct this year. I don't know how much round of applause I can give you for that, but I'm glad they made the change. So then they begin talking about current gen. So here's a screenshot of what the cruise ship is gonna look like. Of course, they got their billboard advertisements and some 3v3 courts, it looks like here. Basically, the premise of current gen goes as follows. You're on a cruise ship and the cruise ship is going to different destinations. It'll stop at those destinations and you get off. So you're playing on the sea and you'll stop and get on land and play on land as well. So the environment should change enough to the point where you won't get tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. But it's a little interesting how the cruise ship works because it's like different decks. And I think you take elevators to go to different decks and each deck has its own thing going on with it. 2K says there's five different tiers starting with the lobby on deck four. The lobby was the video I showed you earlier where it had the wreck and you scroll around and there's a little shopping center too. They also introduced the my court, which is gonna be on deck eight here. There's also pro-am games and team practice facility courts on deck eight. On deck 14, there's gonna be the anti-up finally sounds like on both next gen and current gen the anti up or the stage as many call it is making a return anti up has been in 2k since what 2k 15 and for some reason the past couple 2ks they made it into a park event where it wasn't 24 7 anymore so you had to wait till the park event to play anti up but it seems like both on current gen and next gen stage is making a return they say on deck 14 there's also going to be 2v2s 3v3s in the gatorade training facility so there's that but once you get to deck 16 over here you get the 3v3 Three games, a new 5v5 court with park rules, surrounded by a lazy river properly titled The Moat. Uh, there's no visuals of that just yet, at least not one that I've seen, but I'm curious to see how that's gonna look, because I think it should look visually fucking dope. And as 2K reminds us here, lastly, to avoid getting cabin fever, the cruise ship will dock at a myriad of locations this year. Seasons will serve as a gateway for exciting new excursions, taking you to tropical and recognizable locales each season. They promise fresh content, new rewards, and unique events for you to engage with. And so this is the Operation Sports article. For some reason, 2K was late to dropping their own article, like about an hour late. So a lot of people got the information from other sources, but 2K had some information in their courtside report that for some reason wasn't anywhere else on the internet. So it's like you had to just find the information where they was putting it, but it was everywhere. So 2K also shows us visuals here of what the My Court looks like. And if you've played 2K for years, you would see this and just be disappointed. Because although I'm excited My Court is back, 2K, for sake, please, just push this wall back. This is gonna give you the same camera issues the My Court has been giving us for years. Since like 2K15 has been the same issue. Bro, it's so easy to fix the issue. Why are y'all so allergic to making small fixes small quality of life fixes. So I imagine this micro is not gonna be any different than the ones in years past. It's just gonna be like cramped up and anytime you get close to the wall, the camera's looking like this and you can't see ahead of you any more than your 
Anyway, I'm not gonna get into it all over again, but uh, if you enjoyed the mic cords in the past, they're back. Hopefully they're not as glitchy to get into. There's been years and years of issues just trying to load into your friends' different mic cords, but 2K reintroduces it here. You know, I'm interested. Maybe the reason 2K is not calling the next gen crib a mic cord is because you can't load into it with your friends. Maybe it's your home, but other people can't visit you at that home. Maybe that's why they have the Gatorade private cords. Actually, that kind of makes sense when you think about it, that theory because they don't have the Gatorade private courts on current gen, so they have to have a mic court. But because they have it, huh, I might have just came on to something, ladies and gentlemen. But hey, if it was up to me, I'd rather have a private court with good cameras than a mic court with garbage cameras. But 2K says, again, like previous years with the mic court, you can change up your backboards, your net, your mesh, and your murals on the wall. All of the stuff you could do previously on the mic court, you could do on this year's mic court as well. A couple more pans. Hey, 2K, whichever camera y'all using right now, can we have access to this camera on like, a, on like a theater mode, please? It's something that a lot of designers and content creators have been asking for. It would be very, very useful. So 2K also shows us this video here, a top deck. And uh, this is where the twos and the threes. Oh, this is just twos, it looks like. I'm not going to lie. I don't know which one I'm going to be playing, to be honest with y'all. Part of me believes that it has to be next gen because that seems like where the folk... What the f Go back. Did I just see a, a boxing ring? What the hell? Okay, here's the Gatorade training facility where it's bigger than ever. They have a boxing ring where please tell me we could play boxing. I know it's not. I know it's a basketball game, guys, at the end of the day, but damn. Is that a slide? Did you guys just see that right there? Is that a sl I guess this is how you transport then, huh? I thought it was going to be elevators, but I guess you just slide around in these little tubes. <laughs> Which is like, oh, there's an elevator right there too, so it might be both. Who knows? They got the bench presses and all the same workouts they've had in previous years uh, of the Gatorade training facility. They got the dash. Okay, that's pretty f cool. I appreciate 2K showing us those visuals. But there's actually been something really, really interesting happening, especially on Twitter, but even on YouTube, and if you look on Reddit, any 2K community. There's it's been like this split in the community where some people is like, oh, I'm playing current gen. And it, every, some other people say, I'm playing next gen. Y'all only playing current gen because you can't afford next gen. And you might think like, maybe I'm exaggerating. No, 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 no. It is like a vicious fight the past few days on Twitter between people that want to play the current gen version of the game and the next gen version of the game. There's been people that have gotten the game early that's been leaking gameplay and just showing like what the dribbling looks like and what this looks like and what that looks like. If you tried showing it on this channel, it, my channel would get murked. So I'm not even gonna attempt that. But people are like viewing like a five seconds of leaked footage and going like, okay, current gen 100%. And it's such odd behavior to me because they're both NBA 2K games, guys. And although the idea of having the community split is not great, if both games do well and are fun, then what are we complaining about? In the clips that we did see so far, though, it seems like they brought back a lot of the animations that people love. That crazy, valuable step back in NBA 2K17 that I love doing is back. On the current gen version of the game, I've seen footage of people doing hop cancels. It looks dope. I, and I don't want to get too ahead of myself because it's not a lot of footage and I haven't had my hands on the game myself yet. So there's no point of making like any bold statements based on what I've seen, but I'm telling you right now, the stuff that people have been leaking is infinitely more exciting for everybody right now than the stuff that 2K has been actually showing. Because when you go and look at the 2K trailer, let's do that real quick. It's just a bunch of cutscenes. Like this might get like a casual person excited about the game, but a person, dude, they're throwing a frisbee? Like man, f damn 2K, y'all missing the mark with trailers because it's like, I know you want to emphasize the interaction and the RPG stuff because that was the focus this year, but come on, man. you ha We haven't even seen raw gameplay footage from 2K themselves, just cutscenes and B-roll and kids playing hopscotch, man, what? How do y'all believe that this shot right here is more important than just showing us raw gameplay? It's crazy to me. Get someone who's great at dribbling, get someone who's great at shooting, get someone who's great in the post, get someone who's a great big, and get them to like show us some raw gameplay of what it would look like you know what i'm saying we still don't know officially from 2k what the new aggressive dunk meter dunk timing thing looks like yet because they haven't showed it to us but that will get people excited about the game so 2k's rollout again is still in question considering we're a couple days from launch some people already have the game early and even if you don't have the game early if you have an xbox right now is my time of recording you can pre-download the game i, I imagine playstation is not too far behind so it's like damn we're getting the game before 2k even shows us the most exciting parts of the game that's l promo the news actually isn't even done there because later today ronnie said he's gonna reveal some like deep dive stuff about the city 
So I imagine Ronnie's gonna be revealing stuff that wasn't in the gameplay post, although I don't know how liberal he can be in his talk, because I assume there's some things that he still can't talk about, even though this should be the day where we hear everything there is to know about the park. For what it's worth, it was a lot of information. It's, I mean, still is a lot of information fluttering in, and if, if you refresh your Twitter page, it's like someone is posting something you haven't seen yet expeditiously, bro. But like, look, let me show you. The, look, the insane amount of hate on last gen is wild. So many hypocrites. We have played neither game. How are you gonna tell people to not hate next gen if they haven't played it then turn around and say that <laughs> look I, I won't even have to look hard so it seems like 24 7 stage is back that was important 2k added matchmaking even though you can't play it with squads hey i know for some reason people just want to find something to be angry about but if 2k finds a way to up two games i would be surprised i imagine at least one of them is going to be enjoyable to play and in my brief stint of watching people who actually had the game early i'm excited that they finally brought back some of the animations that they took away in years past they added a bunch of new different dunk packages and layup packages and dribble packages i'm excited to experiment with those 2k mentions that seasonal content is not only going to include some dribble animations but also jump shot animations that's pretty cool but again, it is the NBA 2K game, so I imagine the launch isn't going to be smooth. I'm curious to see how everything plays out, but that's it for the news right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're probably going to hear more news later today. I might pop on a stream if something happens and just react to things that way, so tune in for that. If y'all enjoyed that video, make sure to click this video where I explain how I think 2K just slid in a way to make 2K22 a little bit more pay to win. You can become a 101 overall now if you pay for it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.